Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. Today's video is going to be me showing you my working from home video editing setup for 2020. And I have to say, this is like the first time I feel like ever that my setup has come together. And I mean overall, like the right paint color, the right gadgets, the right computer, the right everything. So I'm very excited to show you this as it's been something that I've been building for years. You know, this hasn't been just something I assembled overnight. Of course, you start with the big value items like the laptop or whatever, and you work your way all the way down to buying, you know, even the best monitor arm you can possibly get. So after all this time, I feel like the setup has finally come together. My latest addition has been my new desk chair, which I am super happy about. And yeah, I'm very excited about how this all turned out. And as this video is also just a great way to say thank you so much for supporting the channel. I've just hit over 400 subscribers and I'm nearly at 80,000 video views as I'm recording this, which I know isn't a lot, but I think it's a lot for this channel. And I'm super proud of how it's turning out. And there's gonna be many more videos coming your way. So as a thank you, uh, here is my setup tour and let me walk you through it. So first, let's get started with the desktop computer. That is the HP Omen. I've made videos about this and um, it's been doing great. It's been upgraded in April and since then it's been running like a champ. It is struggling a tiny bit with Microsoft Flight Simulator, but I think a lot of computers are right now. Uh, maybe it's an incentive for me to get a new gaming computer. No, actually, it's not an incentive. I do not need a new gaming computer. It's actually been running fine. Then, as for the desk itself, this is by Heckler Design. I got this about eight years ago. That's how long it's held up and it still looks fantastic as it does the day I first got it. The original mat that I had for it, I actually just threw out today. It is gone. I need to get a new one. I hope they have some left in their warehouse. I've been using this temporary kind of lighter colour, but um, it's nowhere near as the quality of the original mat I had for the desk. The newest addition to the setup is this office chair. I've been searching so long for a good office chair. I found this. This is a South Korean manufacturer called Citus, and this is the T50 operator chair. I love it mostly for its colour because I was looking for a grey and white type chair that was completely grey and completely white and this fit the bill. It was really hard here to find that type of coloured chair. Obviously there's like a lot of black chairs and I also wanted to be ergonomic. There was a lot of um, desk chairs that were grey and white but were more for like casual use whereas I'm always sitting for hours so I needed something that was both ergonomic and had a great design and I'm glad I finally found it. You know my black chair was actually great when my walls were white but now that there's like a dark wall colour, my desk is kind of a dark red, it was getting all very dark so this white and grey chair kind of puts a lot of light back into it and it's also been a hit with the dogs. The dogs love sitting in it, they look very cool as you saw there. Um, so and it's been a hit with absolutely everyone. So one thing that I actually really like about the setup is the new paint colour which I've done back in about May. So it's a navy blue but what I really like about the way it works is that depending on how I set up the lighting setup it can either be really kind of muted and kind of dark grey to almost black looking but then if I shine a light on it it will look pretty blue. So it always gives my videos a lot of kind of you know visual interest because in some videos it can be nice and muted behind me it's kind of muted in this video but in some of my other videos it can be really vibrant and saturated depending on how the light is set up which is a really cool feature of paint to say the least. The big piece of the desk is obviously the monitor this is the LG 27 UK 50 I've also made tons of videos about this I love this monitor it's really color accurate it does complete you know rec 709 which is what I need to do for all my clients and it's still the broadcasting standard and even for films a lot of people don't bother to color grade in DCI they just do rec 709 because if they have a low budget spend they can just do everything in rec 709 they know it's gonna look great on TV they, got, they know it's gonna look great on you know cinema it's kind of just a color standard a lot of clients I'd have would use so we've been using rec 709 and you know like the color calibrator does it 100 100% perfectly. So I actually really prefer using a single monitor setup. I do have a dual monitor um, arm stand from Amazon Basics as you can see there. Um, but what I actually really like though is that when I do need the dual monitor, so for example if I get an influx of work, I can just hook it in super simple and just get to work straight away. And then when I'm not using it, I can take the second monitor out and put it back in my closet, which is what I'm doing right now. So I do prefer a single monitor setup for focus, but sometimes when you just get like a ton of work and you just need to multitask, you do need that second monitor. And I like that my setup is versatile to accommodate that. 
The main computer in the setup is the 15 inch Apple MacBook Pro. I've had this for about a year and a half now. It's the mid 2018 model with 2.6 gigahertz processor with 32 gigabytes of upgraded RAM. So it runs quite well, it runs really fast, but it does get very hot. So I cannot wait for Apple to ditch those Intel processors because they do overheat quite a bit. Next up are the Harman Kardon sound sticks. I actually really like these. I like them mostly for the design. In terms of functionality, it does have Bluetooth built in, which is pretty cool for connecting a phone to it. But the one thing I don't like about them is that if when they're inactive, they will turn off automatically, which is good. But when they want to reactivate, it takes them about five to 10 seconds to turn back on. And you actually have to play something kind of loud to get them to reactivate. If you play something kind of quiet, they're not gonna reactivate. So I usually have to blast some song just to get them to kind of uh, warm up again. So that is kind of a downside of the sound sticks, but you know, they're still pretty solid even after all these years. I think sound sticks have been around for nearly two decades at this point. I mean, they have been iterated on. I mean, this one has Bluetooth built in, but um, yeah, they're pretty timeless from Harman Kardon. As for the keyboard mouse, this is the Logitech Craft Wireless keyboard and the MX2S. These are completely solid. I would love an MX3 mouse though, mostly for the USB-C port, but I think it actually is ridiculous spending a ton of money on a new mouse just for its USB-C port and not any of the new features that mouse would have. And again, the MX2S is still solid, so I will hold out with it as long as I can. Um, but yeah, this is just a really solid setup from Logitech, as is the webcam. The webcam is also from Logitech. That, they, they are the official supplier of my accessories for this setup. They're actually not sponsored. But I have been using the Logitech Brio. I made a video about that too. Fantastic webcam. I look the best on Zoom calls compared to everybody and their potato cameras from their MacBooks. Um, I love the Brio webcam and it's even good for streaming games. I mean, I've been doing that on Twitch and it looks absolutely fantastic. This lavalier microphone is actually what I use for streaming. It was super cheap. It was about 10 bucks from Amazon. It plugs into my computer. I clip it onto my shirt and I can go ahead and just, you know, stream it on. It sounds great. Um, it's really clear. Um, I much prefer to like one of those kind of microphones that put on your desk that picks up everything. This one is really directional. So I could be even playing a game with the speakers on or even doing a call with the speakers on and you're not getting that interference. It only kind of picks up the voice itself and that's something I really like about that microphone. This is my iPhone on its little dock. Um, I had a wireless charger at one point. I still have it in my drawer, but I prefer fast charging. If I ever need to run out of the house really quickly, I can know that my phone's charged because wireless charging takes ages. And yeah, that's, that's just my iPhone setup. These are just kind of the small accessories I'm always using my USB-C dock because you know, USB ports and also my USB-C SSD, which is my scratch disc for editing on. I love this so much. Highly recommend 10 out of 10 SanDisk Extreme SSD. Go get one, it's perfect. And I can't believe my phone went off just as I was saying that, but we're gonna keep going. Then actually what we have over here is my shelf, which is actually got from Amazon. It's, the quality is questionable, but it actually looks fine right now. And it, it does its job, but actually this is kind of like why I kind of have all my other accessories. Pretty, a lot of, a lot of gaming stuff you can see on this shelf over here. So I've got my Nintendo Switch, I've got my Xbox One S, and I kind of have them kind of separated out. So the top shelf is where I have my Nintendo Switch and the Xbox controller. So it's really easy if I want to play. Uh, underneath I have the Xbox console and then all the games for the Nintendo Switch and for the Xbox. I think with the next generation of consoles, it's time to say goodbye to physical discs. I actually got the physical discs for this generation because I thought it'd be a good idea because I'm like, you know, these game services, you never know if they're gonna be around forever. Whereas, you know, you always have these physical discs, but they take up so much room. And that kind of mindset that I've had about that has just decreased so much over time that I actually, I actually do think that the next generation consoles, I'm just gonna buy my games entirely on the platform, particularly because during recent times, I've, uh, I bought Resident Evil 2 on the cloud and it was just so convenient. Underneath we have my surge protector, which just is an absolute mess. That's not even going into it, just a lot of cables. I did the best I could and that was what I was given. And of course, underneath we have the Harman Kardon sound stick subwoofer. And again, I know it plays great there. It sounds great and it does its job. On the very top, I just have my Philips Hue light. 
and I also have my Elgato capture card which I use to transfer between uh, the Nintendo to the Xbox so it all goes into my monitor and I can also feed it into my computer but it's also really great for screen capturing on my Mac without a performance hit so usually I just record the screen on my computer but there was always like a performance drop whereas when you kind of plug it into your MacBook into the Elgato there is not really a performance decrease. Also spotted are those AirPods and um, I've had those for about two years now. It's pretty much the battery on them have gone to sh I mean whoa the battery on those AirPods have seriously and the Philips Hue light is on top of this little acrylic drawer that just has a bunch of cables and wires in it, just some really small, you know, accessories that I get to for quick access. So what I really like about the setup is that it's compact when it needs to be. I can push the desk in, I can push the chair in, and it becomes this really small shell. And I think that's super cool. And then obviously when I need to use everything, I can pull everything out and then I have the full spread so I can be really productive. So I really am happy with how it turned out. I think my chair looks amazing. I think it's a great balance between you know, the dark colors of the wall and the bold colors of my desk and then just having a really nice light and gray uh, chair. So in terms of though how I see my setup evolving in the future, I actually think Apple moving to those new Apple Silicon processors will be also be a transition for me. So for the past 12 years I've been using MacBooks. I got my first one in 2008 when I was just 12 years old. I'm now 24. I've been always using MacBooks for basically half of my life. Because of the way work has changed and we're all working from home, but also where I am in my career, I think a desktop Mac computer will be my next purchase in terms of computing. So I think it might be time to say goodbye to the MacBook. So I'm really excited to see what Apple comes out with with their ARM iMac or even their ARM iMac Pro if they keep that model. But you know, if the iPads are so powerful, I can't imagine what their desktop computers will be with these processors. And um, I am very excited about that. I think it would also make my setup even more cleaner than I have it now if I can kind of have an all-in-one computer system. So now it's to you. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think of my setup. And if you're a Mac user, let me know how you think the ARM transition to the new ARM processors is going to impact your workflow. Are you going to be like me moving to a desktop or are you actually going to be like these new processors are so powerful, I'm going portable. I'd actually be really curious to, see, to hear your thoughts on that because I think there could be a lot of you that are on desktops and if the portables are as powerful as they say they are, you might go portable. So that'd be a really interesting uh, conversation to have. So do leave a comment below. But other than that, I hope you guys are staying safe and well and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.